Hello, and welcome to Intervals Part 2, or Getting Into Open Space. Last time in Part 1, we talked about the foundations of all this, some historical background, a little bit of math, and we talked about the intervals of a second and a third. Today, we'll be talking about fourths and fifths, so getting a little bit further away from each other with our notes, hence the open space. Before we get into it, though, let's do a quick review. The language of music is comprised of notes, fixed frequencies of sound, and these notes are represented on the music staff, the five lines and four spaces that we know and love, and individual lines of music, when they're performed, that's called a melody, and if you combine those notes, it creates consonant or dissonant sounds that we call harmony. Music is kind of like math. One of the main goals of ancient philosophers and musicians was to describe that distance between the notes. And we call this distance between the notes an interval. Pythagoras was actually among the first to develop a true mathematical relationship to explain this distance between the notes. And he really set himself to the task of finding the exact frequency of each note and then finding the mathematical relationship between those various notes. So once he had the individual note sort of plucked out of thin air and had a, a reading for it, that individual note we call the pitch, and that is that fixed frequency of vibration or of sound. Now, I go into more depth on this in part one, so if you're interested, go ahead and check that out, or I'm sure you can find lots of other things on the web to describe that, but we're going to keep moving on. So today we're talking about intervals, and the concept of an interval is very simple. You're just counting from one note to another. For example, the interval from C to D is a second. C, D. One, two. Two notes, it's called a second. C to G, that's a fifth. C, D, E, F, G. One, two, three, four, five. Five notes, called a fifth. Seventh would be from C to B. C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Seven notes, it's called a seventh. It's not very complicated, it's math. You don't even have to use even more than two hands or, or a hand and a foot, right? You're just keeping it real simple. You're just counting notes. But we're actually a little bit smarter than that because we know that there's something else. We know that there are notes in between those natural notes. There are sharps and flats. So we have to take that into consideration. We could have a C going to an F, a C going to an F sharp, or a C going to an F flat. Now, C, D, E, F, that's all going to be some sort of fourth. But we see F, F sharp, F flat. We have to be a little bit more specific with what we call that fourth. So to do this, called identifying the quality of the interval when we are specifically describing the interval all the way down to its half steps. And that's how we discuss these precise intervals when we discuss exactly how many half steps there are between each note. So we'll start real easy. For example, between C and D flat, there is one half step, C to D flat. So C to D would mean that it's a second, C to D flat means one half step. Now we go a little bit bigger, C to D. Now that's still a second, because C, D, that's just two notes represented. But there are two half steps, C to C sharp and C sharp to D. So even though it's a second, the half steps are going to make it a little bit of a difference. So let's extrapolate a little bit further. How many half steps are there between C and D sharp? Now don't get confused. C and D, that's still a second. That's still just two notes, C, D. But because it's a D sharp, we have to talk about the half steps. Don't get confused about flats and sharps. D flats and C sharps are the same thing, so you have to know that almost every pitch has more than one name. So to count these half steps, C to C sharp, that's one. C sharp to D, that's two. And D to D sharp is three. There are three half steps in the interval of a second between C and D sharp. What I said earlier about knowing that each note has possibly two names, we have to know how that works for every note. Between almost every note, C, D, D, E, uh, G, A, A, B, there's going to be a sharp and a flat. And you have to know this because that's going to key in, pardon the pun, exactly how many half steps there are. Now this is gonna work real well with two exceptions. We have C and B and F and E. So between these two sets of notes, between B and C and E and F, they are always just half steps. On the piano, 
There's going to be no black key between them. It's just consecutive notes between B and C and E and F. That's just a half step. There's no sharp or flat in between them. So let's review everything we've talked about up till now. Let's also use this graph. This graph shows you every single note with all the notes in between them. And there you can see the sharp and the flat. Uh, they occupy the same space. It'll be the same pitch. It'll be the same frequency. We can just give it two names. We could call it uh, Mr. Smith, or we could call you um, Agent Smith. It doesn't really matter. It's going to be the same note, just a different name. So to read from left to right, just like you would on a piano keyboard, the notes get higher in pitch when you go left to right and you're going forwards through the alphabet. Vice versa is true. If you're going from right to left, the notes are going to get lower in pitch and they're going to go backwards through the alphabet. Between each block or each pitch, A to A sharp, A sharp to B, B to C, that's just a half step. And if you skip a block, you're going to create a whole step. But this should make sense. Two half steps equal a whole step. So if you skip a block, that's a whole step. If you go from one block to the next, that's a half step. You can see that B and C and E and F, that's already a half step. That's the smallest interval we have in Western music. To create a whole step, we skip a block, like I just said, two halves equal a whole. So if we're going from B to C, that's a half step. But to create a whole step, we would go B to C sharp, two halves equal a whole. Now these intervals, they're still not going to change with sharps and flats. You're still just going to count the notes in order alphabetically, regardless of sharp or flat. So for example, A to C, and then A to C sharp, they are both thirds, A, B, C. Just three notes are represented, but that's where the counting comes in. We can see that even though they're thirds, they're a little bit different. So that's how we talk about the quality. We talk about the precise distance of that third, and we know that a to C is a minor third. A to C sharp is a major third. The minor third is going to have three half steps. The major third is going to have four half steps. So if everything I just said rings a lot of bells and you go, oh yeah, that makes sense. Great. Let's keep moving on. If what I said is sounding like I'm speaking gibberish, you might want to go back to part one because we're just taking all of that same information and we're building on it. We're not doing anything else with it. We're not doing anything different. We're not changing the rules but it's going to be the same. So if you don't understand it now, maybe go back to part one, maybe ask myself, ask the teacher. Um, otherwise, this is going to get even more gibberishy as we go. Last time we discussed seconds and thirds. Seconds go from one note to the next, for example, C to D. A minor second is just one half step. Uh, the example we gave earlier was C to D flat. A major second is two half steps, also known as a whole step, right? C to D thirds, for example, moving on, looks like they skip a note. This uh, purpose, we're going C to E. So it looks like we skipped D, but it's still there. We're still counting it C, D, E, but that's what makes it the third. Three notes are involved. A minor third is three half steps, a whole step plus a half step, for example, so C to E flat. A major third is four half steps, or in other words, two whole steps built on top of each other, C to E natural. So we did seconds. We did thirds, and now here comes the new stuff. We're talking about fourths. Find a fourth, just like we do with seconds and thirds, we're just going to count. We're going to count up four notes. For example, C up to F. One, two, three, four, C, D, E, F. Four notes, that's a fourth. Another one, A up to D. A, B, C, D. One, two, three, four. These are fourths. But now you might ask, oh, well, that makes sense. We're just counting. That's the interval. Great. Let's figure out the quality. How many half steps are there? Well, let's let's check it out, shall we? C up to F. Well, C to D, that's two half steps, right? It's a, it's a whole step. Two half steps are in a whole step. Then we're on D, D to E. That's another whole step, so two more half steps. And then E to F. Remember, E to F is automatically a half step. So C up to F will be five half steps. What about A up to D? A to B, there's your whole step, two half steps. B to C, ah, remember, B to C is already a half step, so it's just one. And then C to D, it's a whole step, so you get two. So the interval of a fourth, A to D, contains five half steps. Pretty straightforward. So a fourth that is comprised of five half steps is called a perfect fourth. 
And another way to sort of think about it and look at it is if you know your key signatures, C major, you expect to find an F in your key. In the key of A major, you do expect to find a D. So these perfect fourths are just naturally winding up in your key, hence the term perfect. Now, perfect fourths, they sound very distinctive. It's a melody that lots of us recognize. Here comes the bride. This is something that a lot of us recognize. And if you're a bass player, this might sound even more familiar because your instrument is tuned in fourths. So starting on your lowest string, E, going up to an A, that's a fourth. Starting on that string, A, going up to the next highest string is a fourth, takes you to a D, and then the D up a fourth takes you to a G. There are your four strings. So perfect fourths are very important to bass players. Now, as we talk about fourths, you can immediately start to think, well, I bet there's other types of fourths. C to F, that's a fourth. Well, what about C to F sharp? Well, yeah, that's a fourth, but that sort of works like some seconds and some thirds. Um, we talked about C to D sharp earlier as we were finding half steps. Um, and then we also could have like C to E sharp. Now, we did not discuss these in part one. And quite frankly, we're not going to discuss them now. These intervals are a little bit special. They're called augmented, and we'll talk about them later. So just, just, just forget about them just for a moment. We'll come back, trust me. Uh, but for all intents and purposes for now, we're just going to focus on perfect fourths, minor major seconds, minor major thirds. But for this video, we're doing fourths and fifths. So perfect fourths. Intervals of a fourth, four notes up with five half steps. So let's practice. What is the perfect fourth above these notes? Remember, four notes up in the alphabet, five half steps. We'll start on an A. Starting on an A, we just talked about it with our bass friends, A, B, C, D. So that's your fourth note. So you know the answer is going to be some sort of D. So now starting on that A, count up five half steps. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, and look at that. The fifth half step is the note D, so a D is the fourth. Next, if you start on that D, a fourth above D, we'll just count up four notes, D, E, F, G. So you know that the fourth is going to be some sort of G. So what G is five half steps? So count up five half steps, go up five blocks, one, two, three, four, five. Lo and behold, we have a G. Now start on the G. Up four notes, one, two, three, four. We'll take you to some sort of C, and the fifth half step also is C. And again, you can sort of double check these things in the key of A major, you expect to find a D natural. In the key of D major, you expect to find a G natural. In the key of G, you expect to find a C natural. So again, this is why it's a perfect fourth. Now, this next set, we see a bunch of asterisks. And the reason is, is that these are going to contain some sort of something new. Now, we can guess easily between the B and the E. We know that between B and C and E and F, that's naturally a half step. So that's something we're going to have to take into consideration. So let's start with B. Four notes up from B. B, C, D, E. Okay, so we know that it's going to be some sort of E, but what kind of E is going to be five half steps? Well, one two, three, four, five, up, oh, E natural. Starting on that E now, up four notes, E, F, G, A, but you need five half steps, one, two, three, four, five. Lo and behold, A natural. And again, you find these in the key. In the key of B, we have an E. In the key of E, we have an A. So what about F? Starting on F, F, G, A, B, so we know that the fourth will be some sort of B. So what type of B is five half steps up? One, two, three, four. Uh, be careful with that as you go from one end to the other. You see the A's are duplicated, so make sure you don't miscount. So back to that F. One, two, three, four, five. So we see that we have two options. We have an A sharp and a B flat. Well, we know a fourth is going to be some sort of B, so we have to pick the B flat. And that's fourths. Pretty straightforward. Just like seconds, just like thirds, you count for the interval, you count the alphabet. 
for the quality you count half steps. Nothing new, just continuing with what we knew. Next note up. As we continue to climb up the scale, we went from seconds to thirds, thirds to fourths, so we're going to guess that after a fourth, you guessed it, it's a fifth. Again, we're just going to count. C to G. C, D, E, F, G. One, two, three, four, five. Fifth would be A up to E. One, two, three, four, five. A, B, C, D, E. And just like with fourths, you can guess that sharps and flats are going to affect this. And you can also surmise that we are going to ignore that fact for now. We're just going to stick like we did with the fourths. We're going to stick with notes that are in the scale or in the key that we started. And when we do that, when we stick to the note that's naturally in the key, that also is going to be called perfect, a perfect fifth. So a perfect fifth from C to G would have how many half steps? So this is like the next logical question. You gotta do the counting. So C to G, well, let's count it. C to C sharp, C sharp to D, D to D sharp, E D sharp to E, E to F, F to F sharp, F sharp to G. That gives you seven half steps. But wait, there were five half steps in a perfect fourth, and now there's seven half steps in perfect fifths. What happened to that sixth half step? Well, I sort of clued you in, and but if you have been paying attention, you notice that we skipped this one. It's looked sort of like this up until now. One half step was a minor second. Two half steps was a major second. Three half steps was a minor third. Four half steps was a major third. Five half steps was a perfect fourth. Seven half steps was a perfect fifth. So what did happen to the sixth? Well, obviously, there's going to be something there. Sharps and flats do exist that make six half steps a thing. It does exist. But for now, we're going to keep things simple. We're just going to ignore it. We're going to come back. We're going to have a whole video just for this. In fact, that particular interval is, is really, really important. It's a little bit rare, but that's sort of why it's important. Trust me, we'll come back to it. But for now, we're just trying to keep it simple, fourths and fifths. Uh, let's keep practicing. So here are our notes. What's a perfect fifth above the following notes? So remember, interval of a five, half steps that are seven. So start on a D, five notes up from D. D, E, F, G. G, A, it's going to be some sort of A, seven half steps higher oh, is an A. And again, an A note is in a D scale. Starting on a G, five notes above a G will be a D. The type of D that is seven half steps above is a D natural. And again, it's in the key. Starting on your E, five notes above takes you to some sort of B, seven half steps Again, there it is, B natural. Starting on a C takes us to G. Starting on an A takes us up to E. And then starting on an F, again, don't get confused as you go from the right side over to the left side. That A is the same note. Don't overcount it. F goes up to C. Now, these pairings of notes should look familiar to anyone who plays strings that's not a bass player. So violinists, violists, cellists, do you notice anything special? I hope you do. Between D and A, C and G, G and D, A and E, all fifths, and all sets of open strings. So violinists, violas, cellists, you tune to open fifths. These are very, very important to you. Uh, for anyone who knows theory, fifths are also very important because these outline chords, um, they don't tell us if it's major or minor. You have to add that special note, the third in, but the fifth does give us sort of the bookends of our chords. But it's not always going to be naturals and, and other naturals. We're going to have sharps and flats. So when we do this, well, well nothing really changes. It's still the same concept. You go up the correct number of notes in the alphabet, you find the right number of half steps, and there you have your new note. So let's mix and match. Be careful. Here are, is your scale of notes. What is the perfect fourth? Fourth above the following notes. Remember, four notes up five half steps. Start on a B flat. So you can sort of ignore the flat to find the interval, B, C, D, E. So a fourth above B is going to be some sort of E, but now you have to start on a B flat 
and find five half steps above. So start on your B flat. One, two, three, four, five. Five would take you to either a D sharp or an E flat, but remember, we're looking for some sort of E. There's your E flat. So a perfect fourth above a B flat is an E flat. Next, let's start on that E flat. Going four notes above E flat, E, F, G, A. It's going to be some sort of A. So what A is five half steps above E flat? So E flat, one, two, three, four. Uh, again, we have a couple choices, G sharp or A flat. Have to pick the A because we know the A is the fourth. So in this case, it's A flat. Next, trying a new note, starting on B, B, C, D, E. So some sort of E will be your fourth. Five half steps up from B takes you to E natural. There it is. There's your perfect fourths. Same concept. We're just starting on a flat. Not a big deal. So what about perfect fifths? Perfect fifths starting from these notes. Remember, you're going up five notes. It's a perfect fifth, five notes, but you have to count seven half steps. So start on your F sharps, F, G, A, B, C. So we know we're looking for some sort of C. The type of C that is seven half steps above F is C sharp. Uh, let's try E flat. We did that before. Uh, so E flat, five notes above E, E, F, G, A, B will be some sort of B. But what type of B is seven half steps above E flat? We'll just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And there we have B flat. Last, let's start on a B natural. So what note is a fifth above? Again, you're just counting alphabet. B, C, D, E, F. So it's some sort of F. The F that's seven half steps above is F sharp. So there we found our fifths. We found our fourths. It's a two-step process. Number one, you count alphabetically. Number two, you count half steps. It's important to know the order of half steps. You have to know B and C is already a half step. E and F is a half step. Everything else is a whole step. And with that knowledge, you can find any perfect fourth, any perfect fifth in any key. So with these concepts, second, thirds, fourth, and fifth, uh, we're most of the way of completing the whole octave. But we've only covered up to seven half steps. There are 12 in a full octave. Plus, we skipped one entirely. So you know that we're not done yet. There will be more to come. So in the meantime, feel free to practice. Feel free to tune. Practice your tuning. Uh, check out some worksheets. Check out some internet uh, resources. There's a bunch out there for you. And in the meantime, happy practicing. See you next time.